Please let's get seated. All right, so we we have come to a very crucial moment of the night of encounter, and I want you to give a rap attention to any speaker that comes, because by the grace of God, Rematos Bible Academy has been surrounded with powerful men that carry the capacity anointing to deliver to the audience. Now, Reverend Michael Isian Baden is my head pastor. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he is a man of wisdom and sagacity. Yeah. He is a man that can take somebody from nowhere and make the person somebody. Hallelujah. Those are the leaders that God is bringing up these end times. And this man, my closeness to him has brought so many difference in my life. He has challenged me to understand that God has a powerful plan for me. And since then, I've, I've, I've been so keen in listening to him, hearing him, and I've, I've learned so much. I've learned so much from him. I've learned, I've learned so many things from him that I never knew that there is a man of God that carried these things. Now, I think most of us, this is the second time we are meeting him, but I, I, I bet to differ and I bet to uh, challenge you to understand that this time that you are meeting him again, there's going to be an impact that will be released on you. So please, as he's coming, I want you to be on your feet. Let's celebrate even the ministry of Reverend Michael. It's now baby as he takes over. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Let's celebrate the Holy Ghost. Put your hands together. Let's celebrate Jesus. Wow. Please, while standing, I want to also register appreciation to um, the president of this great institution. Um, for the wisdom God has granted him and bringing this to um, this particular point. It's a blessing to be part of this. So let's appreciate Dr. Francis Tenson, such an amazing man of God. I have also learned so many things from him and I believe that um, God has a purpose and a plan for bringing us here tonight. And it's a night of impartation. Can I hear amen? Amen. Particularly this time, um, there are eight watches of the night, 12 to 1. It's a time of warfare, government, and legislation. So pay attention, and the Lord will bless you. Amen. amen. Please be seated. God bless you. My assignment given to me tonight, I don't know anything that comes about, Finance the doctor will tell me to go and teach. Can I hear amen? amen? So my assignment here is to talk to you and share with you on finances and ministry. Can I hear amen? amen? And then we pray as well. And I, I want you to take this um, aspect also very important. Very, very important because as a pastor, many of you who have people or members coming to you who don't have anything, who don't have anything, and that is where your grace must work. Can I hear amen? amen. There are only few pastors who have people who are financially sound coming to your church, but many of the time you have members coming to you who have nothing. And it's up to you, the man of God, to use the word of God to bring them to a particular place where they can also influence society, help people. So ministry and finances is a very important subject. And today I can tell you, if you God calls you and you don't have finance or money, 
it's going to be very difficult. Anointing alone, please, can't bring the kind of results you want to see in your ministry. I'm telling you, all these guys playing these things. Some years ago, I might play drums and things. When we play, we are happy. Then we go home. They stand it. They don't play it for excitement. And no member is even willing to come and start with you from a classroom in our time, this time. Nobody wants to come. So everything about ministry today, in our time, it is money. Can I hear amen? amen. Yeah, it is money. So the subject of finances is very, very crucial. And you, the man of God, what we are talking is for you and also for your ministry. So two things. I'm only talking to you, but I'm talking to you also that when you meet your members, how you can be able to give them a balanced gospel. Balanced what? Gospel. Most of our, our, our teachings are not balanced. Pray, fast, do this. And when you go to the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, the word prayer has, has occurred 375 times. The word prayer directly or indirectly has occurred in the word 375. When you come to money or finances, it has occurred 2,000 times. Yeah. It tells you how important money is. There's one man of God in this uh, dispensation uh, award today. He is the, one of the pastors who has written a Bible on prayer. Matthew Ashimolo. I see him talking money, money, money. When it comes to prayer, he's a serious man there. Can I hear amen? amen? So don't see money or finances in ministry as carnality or shying away. No. The devil would always want you to feel bad when you are talking about money. Because the devil knows that a Christian or a believer having money, the devil knows what you can do with money. So he will allow you to pray, allow you to fast and do many things. But when it comes to money, he doesn't want to talk about it. Every institution wants to make money. Schools, when they make money, today I have a school. I was receiving money and things. I'm, I was excited. When we receive money, we are happy. Hospitals, they are happy. Individuals, they are happy. Please, true of us. But only when a church is having money, there's a problem. A certain star, musician, was having a wedding. And through the donations they were giving, was like a flood of water. They were sweeping over hours. Social media and people were applauding them. Nobody made any comment. But one man of God had all night, and it was cities, one one city. It came to the social media. Church like money too much. So when the world is making money, it's okay. But when the church makes money, there's a problem. So there is a system and a demonic entity that operates that. So when we don't get money, we cannot able to push the gospel to where the gospel must go to. So you, the Christ, the, the pastor, must have a balanced gospel. We have the principles of God or the principles of Jesus and the, and the, and the person of Jesus. So many of us are preaching the person. And the person of Jesus is what gives us peace and eternal life or salvation. But it is the principles of Jesus that gives us wealth. Or prosperity. That is why a Muslim don't accept Jesus. It is traditionalists. But they apply the principles. Example, any man or woman, when you come together, you will get pregnant. True or false? It's not only Christians who pregnate. When you are pregnant, it is nine months, then you give birth. It's not only Christians who have carried baby for nine months. If you're a Christian or non Christian, when you sow, you reap. It's a principle. Can I hear amen? amen? So if you are a child of God and these principles of God existed before we became born again, again, understand that all these people who are making money here and there, they don't come to church and wherever they are making money, they are operating the principles of God and they rejected the person of Jesus. So it means that when it comes to this earth, they will be wealthy, they will prosper but they can't go to heaven. Because the principles of God or Jesus don't take us to heaven. It only gives us wealth. Please, are you getting the balanced gospel? 
So when you are also praying, 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 and you don't apply the principles, you go to heaven and you enjoy, you, you enjoy hell on this earth, on your way to heaven. But the balanced pastor must teach the gospel in a way that your church members can enjoy heaven on earth on their way to heaven. Can I hear amen? amen? We must enjoy, a pastor and your church members must enjoy heaven on earth on our way to where? Heaven. We must not enjoy hell on earth on our way to heaven. It's an error. So you must know the principles so that you will fight and damage poverty consciousness in your member's mind. You must fight it. That the silver and the gold is ours. You can prosper, you can be wealthy on your way to heaven. So you can choose. Abraham died prosperous and went to heaven. Lazarus died broke. So you will choose. Either you, you die Abrahamic way or Lazarus way. Shout amen. amen. <laughs> I've not started though. You take it cool. <laughs> I've not started. And to your surprise, many poor people go to hell very fast. Because when you are poor, you can't serve God well. Especially our time. When you are broke and you are poor, you can't serve God well. All the problems and the troubles in the church are caused by the poor people. Maybe your membership is 100 or 50. But you have not seen some yet. Wait, when you get 200, 500, you see what I'm talking about. Most of the Serious problems. Rich people, only few people cause troubles. Only few. So, let us know how to combine the principles and the person of Jesus. We don't have to only really follow the person or that just salvation, but the principles. There is a way we can make wealth. We can prosper in the kingdom. Can I hear amen? amen. Now, so let's take this scripture. Zechariah 1 verse 17. And Psalm 35, verse 27. I'm talking about what I'm, uh, tonight. I'm talking about um, the purpose for kingdom wealth or the purpose for kingdom prosperity. Every pastor must know the purpose for kingdom wealth or kingdom prosperity. And we must let our members to know. So, in going to ministry, God will bless you. But don't be like Solomon, he knew how to create wealth. But he didn't know the purpose of world creation or prosperity. So he built only one church for God and built thousand houses for women. Yeah. Solomon's wife, 700. Everybody had a house. Their girlfriends, everybody had a house. None of them stayed together, but built only one temple for God. So he knew how to prosper, but he didn't know the purpose of prosperity or world creation. When we say prosperity, you might say, oh, Reverend, I have five cars. Prosperity is relative. There is a place that we can take you to. When we go there, you can't talk. Can I hear amen? amen? The level of your prosperity, there were some comedians who when they were saying they were rich. When Mr. B entered there, they all kept quiet. Because Mr. B, his comedy, the money he receives, and all the comedians there, they must work 10 years where they can get one month's salary from him. And he's also a board member of Rolls Royce Company, Mr. B. So you can see prosperity is relative based on where you are. So we don't have ending. Say, I have prospered, my own is okay. No, no, no. God wants us to prosper so that we can help many people and make the kingdom go very far. Can I hear amen? amen. Yeah, so prosperity is good. And every, every man of God, every woman of God, every servant of God, must 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 expect God or desire to prosper, and we must we must empower our members to prosper. It's very important. Can someone do so? Two scriptures. Then I start. Zechariah one verse seventeen and Psalm thirty five verse twenty seven. So the level that you are today is not the level God. God wants to bring you to a bigger level. Can I hear amen? amen? Yeah. Where on your birthday, members who started with you, you can be able to give them cars. You can give some of them lands and houses. That's what God, God wants to, want to bring us. Not buy them birthday cake and birthday cards. 
Can I hear amen? amen? Prayer warriors who are praying for you five years, ten years, they have sacrificed their life. Secretaries in your church for ten years on their bed, they go on to bring us to a level where we can give them keys to their houses, give them cars. Because not everybody, a child of God, must buy with your money. Can I hear amen? amen? It's not everything a child of God must buy with your money. It's not everything must buy with your money. So your members, it's not everything they must buy with their money. When I was coming today, a friend of mine called me. He's a director of a school. He said, ah, Reverend, I started paying tithes to you. And then I, um, I was expecting government to construct gutter for me. It's a wrong government. And I called yesterday. I brought my, I gave you, I sourced it for you. And they called me that they brought the machines. They're about to do it. He said, oh, I'm not going to give you more. Wow, oh, shout wow. Someone who came, I think um, he's a, a singer in Victory Bible Church. Some shoes, eh? He came, he bought curtains. Yesterday, he bought for the, for the church, foreign curtains. He brought it, said, I'm so into your ministry. He prayed for me. Somebody came and said that I applied for uh, uh, this thing. I want to work in John Kumer's office as a legal, what, what, and that they called me last week and said, I should start work. I started yesterday, so I came to. So when you hear things like this, and people are blessed, you can bless others. So this is the kind of ministry we are talking about. Can I hear amen? amen. So don't, don't, we shouldn't celebrate, entertain poverty or stagnation in our, in our ministry. It is not. It is not from God. It's not from God. It's not from God at all. So Zechariah 1 verse 17, Psalm 35 verse 27. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My towns, my city, my church will again spread abroad. It will go far through what? Prosperity. Church, are they through what? Prosperity. I'm telling you, when you pray and do evangelism combined with money, there is some level of source you can win. You'll be surprised. When you have money, when you have money, as a pastor, maybe some of you have not been in the village, but if you, a pastor from have been in the village and how they do church there, you know how their ministry is tough. When they come to church and they come with only one city, two CD, and you close church and the whole offering is 11 CD, mm -hmm. maybe 11 CD, 15 CDs, the highest fundraising you can get in the distance is 50 Ghana, 55 CDs. Then you know, he said, true prosperity. The city shall be spread abroad. So when we have money with us, man of God, there are many things you can do. There are many things you can do. Now, let me tell you, the, 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 the temple that they built in Solomon's time, David's time, whatever, we don't have any temple in our time that can be compared to it. In terms of the, 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 the size, and the beauty and the decoration will be in Sevilla. So if you think that what we are doing is enough, it's a lie. Today, those who are doing um, this idol worship, because you free, go and see even where they put their bosom. So they have all left the bush. Today, they have all left the Some of them are living in six bedrooms self contained. How much more are God? Huh? How much more are God? So, even, let me tell you another thing. There is also something that is a fact, truth. You can't run away from it. There are certain class of souls or members. They will never come to your church if you don't set up certain standard of ambient in the church. They will not come. They will not come and sit on plastic chair. They will not sit on bench. They will not sit in the auditorium where there's air conditioning. It's not, it's not what you're anointing. They will not sit there. And they are part of ministry. Can I hear amen? amen? Yeah, they will not. They will not. When I finished university, I worked at the Ministry of Youth and Sports. And I was, I was in Director General's office. Once you want to use the stadium, your letter will pass through my hands, go there. And every year, you want to use the stadium. They come and the boss will tell you, put them aside, it's for Otabel. It's for Otabe. Why? In the distance, most of them are in ICGC. Most of them. 
most of the big staffs over there, they are all in ICGC. So any letter you come, they'll throw it away. It's, it's for him. Only the phone call. So please, where we are going, money is important. Lift the right hand. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord. Anoint, my anoint my hands. Say, and grace me grace. in this end time, this end time. For, prosperity. for prosperity. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord. The, oil to the oil to prosper. I receive it from today, it from today. On, my on my ministry, on my life, on my life. in the name of Jesus. Name. And so shall it be. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand of praise. Hey, Charlie. A pastor and I am broke. A pastor and I'm broke. And a lot of frustrations. I begin to hear messages on prosperity. If you don't hear things like this to challenge you, you may think that it is okay or it's normal, but it is not. It's not. It's not to. There are people who are using other means and other source to prosper. But I'm telling you, you can follow the principles and the word of God and prosper genuinely. Can I hear amen? amen. Yeah. And I see somebody, I say, you will prosper. You will prosper. Amen. I said, you will prosper. Amen. You have great men in your ministry. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. By the time you are done with your ordination, by the time doctor anoints you, by the time he officially ordained you, I said, great doors shall be open for you. Amen. The prosperity you have not seen before is coming into your ministry. Amen. The money you have not handled, you shall handle them. Amen. In Nigeria, we call something called Buko. Shout Buko. Oh. Ah, Buko money. It means a huge money. So the money you shall receive after this ordination is not small, small money, but Buko, shall Buko money. Amen. It means money for big projects. <laughs> Can I hear amen? amen? Money for big projects. Money for big projects. Money for big projects. Please, someone read the Psalm 35, verse 27. So the city shall spread abroad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Who delight? Please, I want even version. If I can have three people reading, good, good. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No, uh, uh, oh, oh, prophetess, you are reading different scripture. Uh, prophetess, <laughs> okay, but still open there. Go there, huh? Mm. You see, shout amen. amen, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So God delights. Jesus is excited when we prosper. It is a misfit. It's an insult in the kingdom of God not to be broke or to be poor for some time, but forever or for a long time. Your brokenness or your, your poverty must be for a while. Can I hear amen? amen. I went through this state for a season. It must not be there forever. And the grace is being released upon you from today. Amen. Yeah. It should be for a while. Understand it. So now, quickly, I'll share with you five. So as I told you, even what Jesus, when he came, he shared 37 parables. Jesus, who? 37 parables. Out of the 37 parables, 23 of them were on finances, money. So it tells you how Jesus takes delights when it comes to finances or money. So when you hear any man of God talking about prosperity, whatever, 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 please 
Don't say they have debated you. Mm. Or they are materialistic. Got the Bible that you are holding, sir. You cannot preach the whole Bible. Though. You can't preach the whole Bible. You can't. You can't. God has given this one holiness. This one, this, this one, this, this one, this one, this one, this. Coming together, we are saving the world. Deliverance, this, prophetic, every beyond any grace. You can't preach the whole Bible. Can I hear amen? Amen. Yeah. Bishop was very poor. He went to Kenneth Copeland, went there. And three places where God stores anointing is one on men. Shout on men. Amen. So God stores, and that's why tomorrow you are going to be ordained. Because there is an anointing on man. God stores anointing on man. Number two, God stores anointing in institutions. So he went there, the facilities of Kenneth Copeland. Then he was working on the prayer. God, let this thing that I have seen give me the grace to do the same thing in Nigeria. And the grace came on him. God stores anointing in physical places. So you go to Atimota Forest, Atria Mountains in Koko. There is a, there's an anointing there. There's grace there. So why are, why are they keeping you here? There is a grace here. And I hear amen. amen. There's anointing here. It's very important. And some of you, some people are supposed to anoint you into ministry but one way or the other they have not and i don't want to tell you the reason the factor you go to um the book of kings first and second god sent elijah that elijah come down from the mountain i'm sending you to a place go and you see a man called hazel go and anoint him he must be a king of syria anoint him you will see a man called Jehu. He must be a king of Israel. Anoint him. And anoint a farmer called Elisha. He must be a prophet. Elijah came down and anointed Hazel. He became king. Anointed um, Elisha. He became prophet. But forgot to anoint Jehu. It was after 14 years. Elisha remembered that the time that they were anointing them, Elijah was supposed to anoint a certain guy called Jehu to be a king of Israel. And because of the delay, frustration, Jehu, who must be a who must be a king, has now joined the army of Ahab as a soldier. Forgotten. Some people, whether they play politics in the church or whatever, or whatever, or whatever, you have been delayed. But tonight and tomorrow you'll be anointed. Amen. Any grace that you need to fulfill your ministry, it shall be released unto you. Amen. Can I hear amen? Amen. Yeah. I'm impacting, I'm teaching, so just follow. So, the purpose for kingdom wealth or kingdom prosperity, why does God prosper us? Why must we prosper? What is the purpose for kingdom prosperity or kingdom wealth? Number one, Proof of redemption. In Shira and Yamibe Shira and Yamibe Shira, in Jinasoni saying, Why must go? Why, why does God prosper us? Why must we prosper? Why must we have wealth? The purpose for kingdom wealth or kingdom prosperity for proof of redemption. Proof of redemption. Please, the proof is P R O O F of redemption. P R O O F proof. P R O O F proof of redemption. Second Corinthians eight nine, and then Luke four eighteen. Niyanti ose sofu biya uso ubabo ni sobe di yee. Now she said, Oh, was half a month be the year for proof of redemption. A tresser and pa wo yes, what you can I hear? Amen. Yeah, yes, on to me, denounce me, dear, forever. It's a error, and I'll, I'll show you in the scripture. Yes, you are when you are redeemed, truly redeemed by Christ. 
you shouldn't be broke or be poor forever. It means that you are lacking understanding somewhere. Second Corinthians 89 and then look for 18. And these things, you know, if you don't get angry, so if you don't get provoked in your spirit and eat certain scriptures and take certain bold faith works and declarations, you can't. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, who, uh, which of you hear that your faith, you don't believe that Jesus is God? Who doesn't believe it? You, you believe that they are different. Jesus is different. Holy Spirit is different. And God is different. Do you all believe that Jesus is God? Yeah. Okay, so it's the same God who came to become Jesus. Yeah. Who came on earth. Do you agree? Yeah. So is God poor? No. He is rich. <laughs> Clap for Jesus. <laughs> so in science, when you are called Jesus, we are science. You are far. Please, can I have some water? More water, bottle of water too. Anybody has water here? Any bottle of water? Okay, sir. So, so, so. Oh, this is liquid water. Eh? Liquid what? It is water. Okay, now we have a place that has a low temperature, like a fridge. Then we put this water inside. Here, jab here one hour. Here, bano, salt liquid now here block. I solid. I still water. Solid water. Ensure now, and I change to a different state. Okay, now this water we take it and pour it into some silver bee. Here, you see a place with a, a hot temperature. It just so now I should not a hura not vapor now because so that vapor we can do something sign called condensation, it's still water. So this water can be can be demonstrated in three forms: either as liquid water, as solid water, or vapor water. It is still what water. So the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God what the Holy Spirit. God the Father is the boss, the commander. Jesus is the one that carries the message or the command. And the Holy Spirit is the power that carries the command. Same person. So this God came in the form of man. He is rich. And because he wants us to be rich, he became poor. So that we can become what? Rich. As simple as that. And <laughs> man, Jim, Tum. Man, Jim, Tum. Do I, do I, I, I went with my elderly brother to a place. I said to go in there. When you go there, I said, bro, well, you, I, we were going, you know, dog, when we were going, I intentionally made him that we we're passing, pass by my house, we were going. Because when we we're passing, he was seen, he didn't believe that even, I said, I said, bro, come back. This man said, ah! He said, bro, bro, you have set a record, set record. But I was, I was hearing that, oh, our family, this, this, this. I didn't believe it. I believe I prayed, but I also believe strongly in God's word. Amen. And I hear amen. amen. So this is my house. This is um, Prophet Pegata Maklu, his younger brother. He has built big story building. But I have this scripture in my mind that because of me, God, Jesus came to become poor so that I become what? Rich. Amen. So these scriptures must be in your mind more than the, the one you believe, generational case. It is generational choice. When you pray and you deal with them, believe in the scripture. Believe in it. Believe. Let us, you see, eat the scripture more. When the cloud is full, eh? it will fall as rain. But because you are, you are not seeing miracles, the, the level is because you have not eaten much of the word you must eat or the prayer. So keep on eating. Keep on praying. Keep on. I sat down with my, my, my spiritual father and we spoke. I said, oh, um, you invite them to come and help you. I've helped you seven years. Now it's time for me to move. The man wasn't, he was happy. We, we moved nicely, everything. After I've left, he was saying something else. He didn't talk. After one year, 
when he heard the impact I was making, he came back and said, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Friday, he has booked me. He didn't book me for one week program. I said, no, I can come. I uh, uh, have a that too. Okay, I'm going to do all night for him and Sunday evening for him. Somebody comes, so we have an international conference and want to be one of our speakers today. So they collected my sin. So when you are there, almost every week, invitation everywhere. So don't rush. Just prepare yourself. And people will be coming to look for, they will look for you. And I hear amen. Yeah. They will look for you. They will be looking for you. That is it. They will look for you. And they believe in the word. The word that we preach, we must first believe in the word. Believe in the word. The man of God must first believe in what? The word that we preach. Believe in the word. Now, let me show you another thing now. Jesus has come. Now, watch something. Read the Luke. Let's do something. Luke 4, 18. Uh-huh. Sir, watch this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Look at what Jesus is using the spirit to do, the anointing. Look at the first place his spirit or the anointing is going to address. So continue. The anointing that is on Jesus is to preach the gospel. First one to what? The poor. The poor. Sent me to be the, broken-hearted. the broken-hearted. To the captives. To the captives. And recovering of sight. Healing to the sight. Set all liberty them that are. So the anointing was to make the poor become rich. And I hear amen. Amen. So Jesus' spirit anointing was first to address poverty. You have not you have you have, you have not cast revelation through that scripture before. The anointing on Jesus was not to make the blind see first. Was not to make the, the, the broken hearted, was first to address the issue of what? Poverty. When anointing came on him, the first thing to address was to meet the needs of the poor. So, what is the purpose for kingdom wealth, kingdom prosperity, men of God? It is to prove our redemption that we have been redeemed. Can I hear amen? amen. We have been redeemed. So you make a choice to be poor or you make a choice to prosper. Teach the members. You must first know and teach them that prosperity is a choice. And let me even prove. Let's go to Proverbs 22 verse 1. Let's see something there. Proverbs 22 verse 1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Read it again. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for the scripture that says that the rich, good, good. Okay, at least I have taught English before. So let my English work here. <laughs> I've taught English in the cons before. So let my English say, The Lord is the maker of them all. He didn't say that the Lord is the maker of them so. It means that the Lord made them all and gave them equal opportunity then one would choose to be poor one choose to be what rich now what it means <laughs> the lord is the maker of them all so god has created all of us and gave us all of us when we were born we were coming those who are parked car there when they were coming they were not holding car when they were coming yeah. from their mother's room they were not holding car when they were coming nobody was holding anything Nobody was carrying house when they came. Nobody. The Lord is the maker of them all. 
So it's a choice that you make. When we say it's a choice, that's a scripture. It's a choice. Do you know something? Our God is a holy God, yet a prosperous God. Our God is not a holy, holy, holy broke God or holy poor. He is a holy rich God. Can I hear amen? amen? So you can be holy rich. You can be holy and what? Rich. That kind of Christianity, sanctimonious prosperity. Hey! Then we are praying and our members, their shoes are, are in balance. Their belt is torn. That kind of Christianity, Master. No! It's past. After we have prayed, we must eat good food. Can I hear amen? Amen. One of my friends was telling us, I can't say, hey, Osofo, please, you should eat fruit too. Eat fruit so you can live well. He died early. <laughs> he did not eat the fruit, was even died early. Can I hear amen? amen. <laughs> so, so we, we must, we must, we must, we must, we must serve God. Our dressing must be good. We must be able to live in a very good houses. Take our children to good schools. Can I hear amen? amen. When I say good school, doesn't mean that uh, very expensive school, but a school that when they go, they will not sell them school fees and say that they have sat the pastor's child school fees. Or well, the, 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 the elder church is going printing fee. Can I hear amen? Amen. It may happen some years ago, but it shouldn't be in our generation. Because there are certain things that you are learning today. Your father didn't know it. And that's why you must do better than them. Can I hear amen? amen. Yeah. There are some things you have privilege to know them today. They didn't know them. So you must do better than them. So our anointing, the spirit that comes on us and the power, Jesus was to address poverty first before any other thing. You can write the scriptures down, then I'll move to the second point. Job 36, 11, Revelation 5, verse 12. Ah, you, you don't even know that the, the road of heaven and the throne are all made of gold. Father, bless us with people of men, people of frank incense, people of gold. Bless us. Bless us. You don't know the frustration that is when you are you are you are you are you are pastoring a church and 90 percent of your members are broke or poor. You don't know the frustration you go as a pastor. If 90% of your members are poor and you don't know the scriptures to lift them to get wealth. You don't know what you go through. And when you finish and 30% of the members are waiting for you, the pastor, to collect transportation or feeding fee for Monday. <laughs> oh my God. You see, somebody has remembered something. Can I hear amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. preaching in there. No, go to a I don't know how blessed it is when you have closed church and people are there and they are waiting to give you an envelope. Man of God, God bless you. It's a choice. So. Chat, I am blessed. I am blessed. So number two, purpose for kingdom wealth or kingdom prosperity is fulfillment of the covenant. For the fulfillment of the covenant. We must prosper and we must be wealthy in order to fulfill the covenant. There is a covenant on us. There is a covenant on you as a pastor. There is a covenant on you as a child of God. Let your members understand that there is a covenant on them. So they shouldn't, they shouldn't accept poverty mindset. They should, they should reject it. There is a covenant. Our father, we are the seed and the heads of Abraham. So God entered into a covenant of covenant with Abraham and prosperity and wealth and greatness is part of the provisions of the covenant. Can I hear amen? amen. It's part of the covenant of our, with, with Abraham. And we are heads of Abraham. So we are connected to that Abrahamic covenant. 
So it should be in our mind that prosperity is already in our DNA. Shout amen. 